Welcome to the future. All sorts of products can be made from stuff we've already used. As we approach 2050, we can build buildings from it. We can build homes. Sustainability. It's coming to your neighborhood, your school, even your local landfill. Ashtrays from used cigarette filters. I'm Chuck Pell. I'm an artist, entrepreneur, and futurist. And we'll explore how Future Tech is making good stuff from garbage in this edition of Earth 2050. From the outside, this office building in Trenton, New Jersey, doesn't look like your typical office. And on the inside, it doesn't either. This is definitely not your average workspace. Almost everything in here, from the desktops to the office partitions, is made of recycled materials. This is the global headquarters for an outfit called TerraCycle. They're in the business of recycling stuff most of us would call garbage. It's the brainchild of Tom Zaki, a global icon in the world of sustainability. He'd like to see the whole idea of garbage become garbage. The entire purpose of TerraCycle is to eliminate the idea of waste. Eliminating the idea of waste is really important because waste is a very modern idea and it's a very big environmental negative. It's a big job and it will involve rethinking how we deal with waste, which is something we need to do. Why? Because there's so much of it. The reason waste is such a big issue is that it's not sustainable. If you look at every other natural system, the output of any system is the input of the next one. You know, a leaf that falls off a tree is eaten by bacteria. The bacteria makes soil, allows a new plant to grow that's eaten by an animal, and it all goes around in a big circle. Waste creates inefficiency and makes these systems not work. Just to give some statistics, 99% of the things we buy become waste in one year. Get this. Worldwide, millions of disposable containers are made every hour. And three quarters of them don't get recycled. They're simply thrown away. If we can't find any more materials, any more power sources, our prosperity will decline. By recycling, by using green technology, we can stretch that point of decline almost infinitely far into the future. And so it really is in all of our interest that all of us participate and drive our decision makers towards that goal. If I could speak to young people, this is what I'll tell them. Learn something about sustainability. What does sustainability mean? What does recycling mean? How difficult it is to recycle. And bear in mind that recycling starts with you. And that's the future, or more accurately, our sustainable future. Entrepreneurs say the way to deal with our trash problem is to make other stuff out of it. I think almost all engineers will work on some aspect of green tech by the year 2050. It's already happening and will only accelerate as we approach 2050. Your clothes, your cars, your smartphones, even large-scale infrastructure projects like bridges and roads could be made with what used to be trash. The whole idea of garbage will change as we approach 2050. Oceans take up over three quarters of the Earth's surface. They are literally the lifeblood of our planet. So it's better for everyone if we pay more attention to what's happening out there. The numbers are astounding. We dump more than 14 billion tons of plastic into our oceans every year. And plastics aren't good at decomposing. So, once they are in the ocean, they stay there. What happens with all this plastic that ends up in our oceans is it either sinks to the bottom or floats, and it cycles into the center of the oceans, uh, which are ocean gyres. And there's not just one, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, but five. Every major ocean gyre is a big garbage patch. But also the ends of rivers and lakes and so on are covered. Some of these gyres are the size of large cities. The plastic does eventually break down, and when it does, it enters the food chain, and you end up eating the chemicals used to make it. It also kills fish by the millions. There's nothing good that comes from this pollution unless you can get it out of there and do something with it. It's a ready source of new raw material, and there's money to be made if this is done properly. New industries are growing up around extracting this plastic. 
Among my adventures in plastic recycling, I went to one plant that processes thousands of pounds of beach plastic every year. This is the future. Why? Since this plastic has already been made once, it doesn't have to be made again. This is gold. So it's cheaper than what's called virgin or new plastic. And there's a practically inexhaustible supply out there. And it's not just garbage from the ocean. Take something like this, cigarette filters. Tens of millions of these filters are discarded every day. So why not do something with them? It may sound gross, but used cigarette butts are a good raw material. In a bit of poetic justice, this ashtray of the future was made of discarded filters. TerraCycle looked at the problem and say, we're gonna develop a process to recycle cigarette butts. Not only will you be able to sell the material, you've just helped cities, municipalities, to clean up one of the more aggravating problems, and that's, you know, uh, people littering the place with cigarette butts. Right now, more than 70% of the garbage we throw away is not recycled. But as people learn more about sustainability, that number is starting to change. Young people are changing the future every single day. Many people in my generation don't think about recycling. But for younger people, it's just a part of what you do. Every single time you take that extra couple of seconds to help recycle a piece of trash, you are changing the future for the better. After all, there is strength in numbers. When tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people get on board with sustainability, together we generate raw material for all sorts of products and help the planet at the same time. My hope in the next 20 or 30 years with recycling is that we first see much higher rates of recycling. Today in America, we recycle one in four of our bottles. Let's make that bigger. And let's hope more things become recyclable. That's my hope. The best way to help the oceans with plastic recycling is to keep it out of the oceans. Once it gets in the ocean, it breaks down, gets eaten, it's tied up in the ecosystem. To pull that stuff back out, you're pulling out more biomass than plastic. The best thing you can do to help our oceans is to recycle every bit of plastic before it ever gets near the ocean. Sustainability, a word not in much use even a generation ago, is becoming more integrated into the lives of people. As many realize, our resources are not unlimited. I think we believe that the world is so big, it's so hard for one person to make a difference, positive or negative. So people are used to, you know, buying things and just simply throwing them away. Just, you know, littering them, throwing it out the car window when you're driving or whatever it may be. It's critical to realize just how powerful the individual vote is. First for what you buy, and then also for what you do with it afterward. So the next time you've got a piece of trash in your hand, try to think twice about what you're going to do with it. Because as we approach 2050, it's no longer trash, it's the raw material for future products. I'm Chuck Pell, and I hope to see you next time on Earth 2050.